name of the Lord. All right, let's read Mark chapter 16, verse 20. Want to go? And they went out and preached everywhere. The Lord walking with them, confirming a word through the accompanying signs. Amen. Can we read from the TPT version? Can we read from the TPT version? Just quickly. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen and amen. Oh, one to go. And the apostles went out announcing the good news where? Everywhere. As the Lord himself consistently walked with them, validating the message they preached with miracle signs that accompanied them. Hallelujah. Somebody shout, he confirms his word. He confirms the word. He confirms the word. All right, let's take our seats wonderfully in the presence of God. That's the title of my brief exhortation this evening. Praise God, it will be brief in Jesus' name. Amen. And they went out and preached everywhere, the Lord walking with them and confirming the word through the accompanying signs. Amen. This year has been declared the year of harvest. It is harvest time 2024. And I did remember that I shared with us during the watch night service that harvest is always preceded by seed sowing. Is that not so? And I said there are three principal seeds that will be sowing in this, come, in this year that we are in. It's no longer coming. We are in that year. Amen and amen. The first seed is the seed of prayer. The second seed is the seed of partnership. The third seed is the seed of preaching. Hallelujah. I got another, another word for them in three Gs this time around. Earlier today. And the first seed is called the seed of, the seed of groaning the seed of giving and the seed of going hallelujah where are my g's here glory be to god you are going to groan in the spirit hallelujah that is traveling in the spirit praying in the spirit glory be to god for the coming of souls the harvest of souls into the kingdom but not just that we are going to give we are going to now with a gospel and then we are going to go hallelujah because the miracle is found in the going not in the staying hallelujah earlier on in verse verse 15 of that mark 16 he says go ye therefore into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature so the miracle is in the going not in in, in, in sitting still so we must decide and choose to go yeah it is a fallacy to say that some people are, mount, are meant to give while others are meant to go no the jesus instruction is that you what you go hallelujah you go and preach the gospel to every creature hallelujah announcing the good news everywhere and so in luke chapter 5 we see the story of peter the, the, his first principal encounter with jesus and let me let me just read it very very fast in luke chapter 5 verse verse uh verse 1 to 11 and it says or oh, I, I, i'll paraphrase it and this is a story where jesus was going to preach to some set of people and there is a, a crowd of people pulling at him wanting to hear him and here are these guys they are fishermen glory to God and they were they just had a disappointing night in fact historically they say Peter was hoeing taxes so the fishing of that night was supposed to be a rescue mo uh, mission from the onslaught of the Romans because he needed to pay taxes. In fact, the way Peter was painted in some of the movies is that he was a crook. However, I don't know. But it was a desperate situation for them. However, after toiling all night, after obeying all strategies, after doing all that there is to be done, he ended up being a disappointing night for them. Cut long story short. The Bible said that Jesus found two boats. 
two fishing boats at the water's edge at the, at, at the edge of, 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 the, of, the, of the sea of Galilee and then it's interesting that Jesus Christ chose the boat of Jesus uh, of Peter amen and asked for him that I want to use your boat and after that Jesus said now can you give me a uh, new King James version after Jesus had was done using his boat in verse 4 see when he had stopped speaking he said to Simon launch into the deep and let down your net for a catch Simon's response was you didn't go to fishing master class I have been to fishing master class I have toyed all night and there's nothing to show for it maybe somebody needs to put aside their stories this evening what did not work last year has passed with last year the fresh instruction that Jesus is releasing to you is all that you need glory be to God so we are caught nothing nevertheless at your word I will let down the net and when they had done this they caught a great number of fish and there was net breaking and their net was breaking the signal to partners in the other boat to come and help them and they came and filled both the boat so they can so they began to sink when peter saw it he fell down at jesus's knees saying depart from me for i am a sinful man O lord for he and all who were with him were astonished at the catch of the fish which they are taken and so also were james and john the sons of zebedee who were partners with simon and Jesus said to Simon, do not, be, do not be afraid. From now on, you will catch men. The purpose of the fish is not the fish. It's for men. Hallelujah. So when they have brought their boats to the land, they forsook all and first followed him. Hallelujah. You know, I said Jesus is such an amazing Jesus when I read this story again. Such an amazing, amazing Jesus that when he walked on this earth, people went after him, not just for the miracle. People went after him because of his teaching. I trust God that I can be a fantastic teacher like that. That Jesus Christ will preach for, to people for three days and people forgot their food. We have only lasted for one day and I am trying to make you to respond. But Jesus Christ held people spellbound for three days and they forgot about their food. May that begin to happen in this church. In the name of the Lord Jesus. <laughs> Some people are saying amen with caution. <laughs> Glory be to God. It is said that they were amazed at his teaching. And they kept wondering where did he get all this wisdom from? This story was not an exception from, 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 those, from that kind of an encounter. They were really pulling at him. They were stronging at him not because of the miracle but because he was a prolific teacher of the word of god he was speaking the bible says that they marveled at the kind of wisdom that was proceeding out, proceeding out of his mouth because he spoke with such an authority that they said this is better than what we have known this is so different and that's why before the multitude pushed him into the river he needed to get a platform glory be to god so that he can communicate with them because think about it how would he have communicated with them if there was no microphone there was no loudspeaker speakers in those days there must be something that would be projecting his voice glory be to god and so he needed the platform of somebody and he ended up being the platform of somebody who had failed in his business maybe the failure is because jesus wants to use your platform it did not cause the failure but the failure is a platform for the manifestation of his glory what did not work last year is a platform for the manifestation of his glory did that you hear you say amen yeah. the side, so peter and now you know i asked the question i said why did jesus christ choose the boat of peter instead of the boat of his partners james and john the sons of zebedee i didn't know that i couldn't ask her the question but you see the other thing i now saw was the fact that the fact that Jesus Christ chose Peter's boat did not exempt James and John from the equation. So it is not a season where you need to envy anybody. 
No matter what it is that you, what, no matter what achievement you see that somebody is getting, no matter what it, what it looks like that, oh, somebody is getting answers to their prayer. Listen to me. God might be prepping you to partner with them. Jesus stepped into Peter's boat. I see Jesus stepping into somebody's boat. Somebody's business is becoming Jesus' platform. In the name of the Lord Jesus. And then he preached from that platform. Preach powerful message. Is it not interesting? That Jesus did not address their problem before using them. Many times we want Jesus Christ to do something about the situation. When I get a job, I'll be more commitment in the I'll be more committed in the kingdom of God. When I pastor, just wait for me. This business deal that I'm pursuing. Once I get it, in fact, I'll be sleeping in church. Pastor, don't worry. See, these small, small coins that is still coming now, I can't give tight from them. There's the big one that I'm waiting for. When the big one that I'm waiting for comes like this, my God. Jesus said, trust me. So Peter surrendered his platform, his failure. Listen, Peter failed. That's the truth. But failure is never final. Glory be to God. Failure is never the end of the rope. In fact, failure is God's opportunity for his manifestation. The fact that things did not work out is an opportunity for you to use that thing that did not work out as God's platform for his glory. Peter surrendered the ship. So he surrendered the boat to Jesus. Jesus used the boat. And then Jesus said, Now, you are ready. When he has stopped speaking, when he has surrendered himself to the kingdom is it not interesting that God would like for us to come to the end of ourselves before he shows up because he does not share his glory confidence in your flesh will never give back to the miracles of God it is confidence in the ability of the Almighty that will make a difference. And so my point this evening, my agenda this evening, is to point us to what made the difference in Peter. Apart from all the preambles that I've shared with us, that he sought the kingdom of God first. The kingdom of God was more paramount to him. And I believe that that is a word for us in this season. Let God's kingdom be more paramount to us over our personal agenda, over our personal desires. Let his kingdom be the priority. When you are praying, let it start from your kingdom come. When you are fasting, let it be about the propagation of his kingdom. When you are desiring business breakthrough, let it be about the kingdom. The Father, I ask that you bring my business to the billion flow so that i can sponsor your kingdom so that i can build churches for you so that i can sponsor kingdom agenda let that be paramount in your heart that's what we see in the life of peter but that did not end there it did after jesus christ used this boat jesus said now cast your net into the sea for a what for a catch now what are the odds? Number one, Jesus is not a fisherman. He was a carpenter. How can a carpenter instruct or advise? You know, in my language, they say that if you accept clothes from somebody, you have to look at what the person is wearing. Is that not so? How can a carpenter be giving me advice on fishing? So that, that's an order there. But that didn't stop Peter. The second thing I realized is that Peter was an expert in fishing. He was an expert in fishing. He was not a rookie. He ideally should not submit to the authority of a carpenter. Glory be to God. Number three, 
The best time to catch fish is in the night, not in the day. Is that not so? The voices of human beings, when Jesus was speaking, ideally should be sending the fish away. But when he was speaking, they were attracted to their maker. It is not strategic thinking to fish during the day. So it seems to me that God is going to be giving you instructions that won't make sense. That won't meet, measure up to the strategy that you have built for yourself. Strategies are good. Amen. Strategies are good. I don't despise the place of strategy. I'm only saying that you should never overrun or overrule the instructions that come from Jesus. But Peter's response is even though I have reservation even though I am not convinced even though you can't speak in this in this regard but Peter said nevertheless and some of us we have to say nevertheless this year nevertheless at your word the difference maker in this story was the word of Jesus Nevertheless, at your word, I will let down the net. Jesus said, let down the net. He said, I will let down the net. And when he has done this, there was a net break. They call it boat sink miracle. But our attention should not be at on the net breaking the boat sinking nature of the miracle, our attention should be in what preceded it. Amen. What caused it? There is a law called the law of cause and effect. Is that not so? And there is also a second law of Isaac Newton. says action and reaction are equal and opposite. Is that not so? He says all objects will remain at the point at the state of rest unless it is acted upon by an external force. That's the first law of Moses. Uh, Sorry, <laughs> Isaac Newton, amen. Moses, <laughs> glory to God. <laughs> Three levels of the world to pay attention to this year. If the world is pivotal in us receiving what God has for us, what Peter had working for him was not a strategy was not what he could do by himself it was the word of jesus three levels number one the written word we must place premium on what is written the written word of god must be a priority for us we have started this year for example the journey of reading through the New Testament and Psalms and Proverbs. If you have not joined, I, be I beseech you therefore, my brethren, that you join. And don't just join. Read it. There is power in just reading the word. Amen and amen. I've shown us the video before of how the word impacts on us when we engage with the word four times in a week. Four times in a week, addictions are break, breaking because people engage with the word of God. This year, we have to deliberately make up our mind to engage with the written word of God. Spend time reading the Bible. Sing this old school, old school song. Read your Bible, pray every day. It's old school, but it is valid for this time read it for it not to depart from your mouth it must be right before your eyes Joshua chapter 1 verse 8 this book of the Lord shall not depart from your mouth but you will meditate in it day and night that you may observe to do according to all that is written therein but then you will make your way prosperous and have good success I want to admonish you read your Bible spend time in the written word of God what is written is always superior to what is happening. Listen. No matter what the situation of the world is, there is a word from God in whatever you read. 
there is a word from God. So you have to first read it for it to become life to you. For it to become a spoken word of God, which I'm going to come to in a, in a moment. But it has to first be that you read it. Don't read it to mark attendance. I love where we are starting from, for example. So if you are not following us, you can't deceive us. We are starting from the book of Philippians. You don't know where we are going next. <laughs> and then you read Psalms while you are reading Philippians. But guess what? I realized that just in two days, every day, God's been speaking to me through what we have been reading. There is no part of the word that he cannot speak to you from. Amen and amen. And so you have to dedicate your life to reading what is written. And let me say this to us. I wrote it in my, in, in the, in my comments on the, on the Bible app. And listen, if you want to read from me on a regular basis, I post comments on that Bible app every day. It might not be in the morning, but every day I post comments on it. When you spend your time reading it, what will happen to you is this. When you are faced with a situation, what you read will come at you. You didn't even particularly pay attention to it, but the Holy Ghost will inspire it to you. So you must give attention to the Word of God. Put premium on the Word of God this year. Put premium on it. Put premium on it. Read it. Read it. Yeah, pastor, I read it, but I don't understand it. Keep reading it. Keep reading it. That's how you read your textbook and you don't understand it sometimes. But you read it all the same. After reading it a number of times, then you begin to get an understanding of it. And let me say this, like I, was, I wanted to say now. Don't read it like you know it. The problem with us many times is we have our premonitions about the word of God. We think we know what it is saying because we are familiar with something like that. But this year, I put that in my comment. Don't read it like you know it. Read it like a baby. Read it like somebody who is ignorant of it. That's how I read it. That's how the word will feed us. Amen and amen. Glory be to God. The second level of the word. Remember, it confirms the what? The word. So the first level is the written word. The second level is the spoken word. The spoken word. The question is, what are you hearing this season? There is something that God is communicating to you and I. There is something that the Holy Spirit is ministering to you. Many of us, we are very familiar with the voice of the devil. And then we now say we struggle with the voice of God. He's been speaking. You know what I know? The devil will not tell you to do something good. That voice that says for you to go and preach to somebody, I promise you, it can't be the devil. It can't be the devil. He will not tell you to preach to anybody. The verse that he's telling you to give all your salary, it can't be the devil. Now, it can be your flesh. It can be emotions. But one thing I can guarantee you is that it's not the devil. Because the devil knows that when you do such things, you are opening yourself up for the blessing of the Almighty God. And the, the last thing the devil wants is for you to be blessed. So we must pay attention to the voice of God in this 2023, 2024. 
Matthew chapter 4 verse 4 says man shall not live by bread alone but by every word that proceeds that what? proceeds out of the mouth of God this is a time when we will place value on what is proceeding from the mouth of God we shouldn't take rash decisions amen and amen we should wait on him we should hear from him what is he saying to us pay attention to it the spoken word of god faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of god if your faith will be on the high in this year it will have to be exposed to the word My word is a lamp unto your feet and a light unto your path. You will not lack direction when you pay attention to his voice. We will not lack direction when we pay attention. Now I'm building up on something. I'm laying a foundation for us. The year is just starting and I'm saying pay attention to the written word of God. Pay attention to the spoken word of God many times the spoken word of god comes from the written word of god it's connected it's very connected now you can't tell me you hear something that is not confirmed by what is written you only confirm the word it does not confirm your own word it does not confirm what you feel like he confirms his own word he answers his own prayer we want harvest then we must pay attention to the word of God. We want net breaking, both sinking miracles. This is the time when we want to hear what the master has to say. When Peter said, nevertheless, at your word. Listen, the principal thing is what it is. Your experience does not matter. In fact, your experience pale into oblivion when he says something your experience does not matter the third level of the word that you need to pay attention to this year is the prophetic word of god the word that he speaks through his servant not every servant through your pastor through the senior pastor we can't take those words for granted you can't take them for granted. God is going to speak to you through, your, through me this year. He will speak to you through your pastors this year. One of the things I ensure that I do is to be in alignment with the voice of the senior pastor. Isaiah 44 verse 26. He says, I confirm the words of, word of my servant. I'm reading the TPT version. And fulfill the prophecies of my messengers. I confirm the word of my servant. And fulfill the prophecies of my messenger. Isaiah 44 verse 26. I know you don't have TPT version of it. Thank you. Just put NLT version. So, but I carry out the predictions of my prophets. By them, I say to Jerusalem, people will live here again. And to the towns of Judah, you will be rebuilt. I will restore all your ruins. He confirms the word of his servants. Pay attention to the prophetic word that is proceeding from this pulpit. Hold on to them. Guard them jealously. Listen, God is going to speak to you through the covering that you are under. You see? It's okay to listen to different men of God. But when it comes to your direction, the, the direction of your life, it's most likely going to come through the covering. Amen and amen. Through the covering. That God has placed you under. In Revelations chapter 1, chapter 2, chapter 3. That we just finished. 
John had an encounter with God. And God was going to send him to the churches in Asia Minor of those days. Ephesus, Pergamon, Smyrna, Laodicea, and all of those seven churches. God was going to send him and God said, I'm sending my word through the angels of the churches. The people that I have put in charge of that church, the pastor in charge of that church, I am going to communicate my heart through them. He did not send John. The letters were not sent to the church members. He was sent to the angel, the pastors, the messengers, the under shepherd of those churches. When Jesus wants to communicate, communicate his heart to his people, he will send his messengers. And you know, when I was reading it recently, Revelation chapter 1, and the Bible says that the message is, you should give the message to the uh, seven stars. The seven stars which are in my hand. I love that. The seven stars represented the pastors. It represented the messengers. And it says they were in the hands of Jesus. I'm glad that I'm in the hands of Jesus. This year, make the most of prophetic words. I like what somebody said. He said the joke of a prophet is even a prophecy. The same God bless you that I said to you. That you said, I bless you too, pastor. It's the same that I will say to somebody. And that person's life will transform for life. What is the difference? Somebody casualized it. The other person held on to it like their word. Their life depends on it. We can't casualize the word this year. If I tell you not to do something, and I say it categorically, and you insist on doing it, I am not to be blamed. Amen. If I tell you don't go in this direction, the fact that I did not say, just say the Lord, that's where people miss it. The fact that I did not say, the Lord is saying to me now, don't go in that direction. Don't take it for granted. Let me help you out to deal with people like me. I probably will not come and tell you that the Lord said I should tell you. But many times the things I am saying to you, if you are paying attention, your heart will be burning within you. Don't casualize the things that is coming out of the mouth of God's servants to you. They can come in form of an advice. They can come in form of an admonition. They can come in form of an instruction. This year, place a premium on prophetic words. This is not about deifying people. This is about understanding God's order. Amen and amen. Understanding what? God's order. As I close, obedience will serve us this year. Obedience will serve us this year. This is what the Holy Spirit inspired to me this, this evening as I was coming here. Obedience is what will separate the winners from the losers this year. Obedience. Obedience. It will be the critical factor in what determines the trajectory of our lives. Obedience. When it doesn't make sense, obey. Don't contend with the word of God. Stop arguing with the word. Let us come to reality now. This is, we are talking reality here. There is nothing more real than the word of God. The word is the reality. If only God will open your eyes. The word is the reality. Walking in alignment to divine agenda is the critical success factor this year. We want our best. Align with the prophetic agenda. 
it is harvest time yours is to obey go into all the world and preach the gospel some people have preached to their husband and they didn't know some people are preaching to their wives and they didn't know but because some people will not obey they miss out on god's best i'm not saying that you should preach to somebody and be expecting that the person is your is a prospect i'm just saying that you don't know what is on the other side of your obedience you don't know it to obey is better than sacrifice give me philippians chapter 2 we read it earlier today from verse 5 as i close philippians chapter 2 from verse 5 the secret of jesus's success was obedience philippians chapter 2 from verse 5 let this mind be in you which was also in what in christ jesus who being in the form of god did not consider it robbery to be equal with god but made himself of no reputation taking the form of a born servant and coming in the likeness of men and being found in appearance as a man he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death listen to me one thing is crucial the obedience will not be cheap it will be costly it will be sacrificial but let me tell you what it will, it will happen it will also be rewarded the obedience will cost you the obedience will mean you have to walk away from something but guess what that obedience will also reward you and so verse 9 you see it says therefore someone say therefore God also has highly exalted him God also has highly it would have been okay to just say he has exalted him but he was highly exalted and he was given the name which is above every other name what premised what was the premise that stood on obedience obedience to what is written about him according to the volume of the books the day he was going on the cross of calvary you think it was easy he said heavenly father if the, if this cup can pass over me is it possible that you have revealed this agenda that there is a way that humanity can be rescued without me going through this cross you know it is something not to know what you're about to go through it is better on you than to know what you're about to go through and know the intensity of it that's why while he was praying at the garden of Gethsemane, the bible says the blue, the sweat that was coming out of his body was like blood he died before dying There is a difference in the feeling of I will point God and point gun at you. And there is a gun. Nobody is not saying it. This is a gun at you on your head. But Jesus Christ saw all of that. But in order for him to walk in obedience to his father, he laid down his life. Now we are not going to literally die, but we'll die to some things in our journey of obedience Peter died to his expertise I'm a brilliant fisherman Peter died to it Jesus said follow me and I'm going to make you fishers of men Peter knew too much not to follow him because just now Jesus said, cast your net. And he saw the... 
the level of breakthrough that he got and then Jesus said follow me I will make you fishers of men he abandoned the breakthrough and followed Jesus you see one obedience to an instruction is what will lead to another instruction some of us we are waiting for God to tell us the next day and we have done nothing about what he has said Lack of trust is the reason why we struggle with obeying him. But when you know him, you will trust him. So that's why this year he will confirm his word. But the word must be in you for him to confirm it. You must respond to the written word. Respond to the spoken word respond to the prophetic word and then get ready for confirmations get ready for confirmations it's going to be a mighty harvest but this is the prophetic word to us that we will be reaping miracles as we are reaping souls for the kingdom you can't joke with soul winning I want to challenge you this evening. Many of us, we have set goals already. We have set goals. But I felt the Holy Spirit asking me to tell you to set goals for souls. Set goal for the number of souls that you want to win this year. I, my goal is simple. I can, I can tell you. 52 souls one soul per week you can do better than me I didn't set that one so that it will be your own limit some of you are called evangelists obey this instruction one goal per week some people it will be one goal per month but don't end this year without harvest of souls because the unprecedented harvest in your finances hinges on the souls that you are bringing to the foot of the cross rise up on your feet Trust and obey, for there is no other way to be happy in Jesus, never to trust and obey. Trust and obey, for there is no other way to be happy. the first stanza of that lyrics if, if, if we can find it trust and obey oh but there is no other way to be happy in Jesus or to trust and obey alright let's, let's sing now when we walk with
Lord, 